Uh, and now I want to introduce Mike Tidwell, who's the director of the Chesapeake Climate Action Network, to talk about one more last issue, which is nuclear power and climate change. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, everybody, for coming out. Uh, I really appreciate all the hard work Alison Fisher done and Johanna Newman, Mary Park. This is really great. Uh, it, it, thank God, you know, finally Constellation Power and the Maryland Chamber of Commerce are agreeing that global warming is something that needs a solution. Uh, apparently, though, they only believe in global warming if nuclear power is a solution. Uh, Ed Osan and I go way back in the Maryland State House, back to 2002, 2003, when, when Constellation was in hearings in the State House when we were trying to pass a renewable energy bill, and Constellation would say, it's not happening, global warming is not happening. Not that it's not happening and we need nukes as a solution. It just wasn't happening, according to Constellation and the Maryland Chamber of Commerce. So at least we've improved on that score. They acknowledge that it's happening. Uh, but it seems to only be happening if nukes is the solution. Uh, we know what's causing global warming. So use of fossil fuels, over half of our electricity in the state comes from burning coal. So when we say global warming's a problem and we need to get off coal, Constellation and the Maryland Chamber of Commerce says, well, if you want to get off coal, you've got to take nukes. You know, in other words, let's get off one high-risk fuel and get into another high-risk fuel. Well, why not just get rid of high-risk fuels? How's, how about that? <laughs> you know, so Constellation says, no, no, we need more power. We'd like to maybe get off these certain energies, and maybe you have a beef with nuclear, but we need more energy. We need more power in Maryland. And the reality is we don't need more power in Maryland. We use too much power in Maryland already, and what we need to do is use less, and, and, and as has been mentioned before, we can do that through efficiency. And let's just take, uh, you know, the, the real threat that really gets me is this threat of rolling brownouts and blackouts. If we don't build nuclear power plants, the lights are going to go out. It's just going to be catastrophic. And, um, you know, let, let's hold on to that idea of brownouts and blackouts, and let's talk about a state that's done a good job on energy efficiency, and that's the state of California. <laughs> Californians use just, just over half, you know, uh, well, they use about half the electricity per capita as Marylanders. I mean, here's a state where they have flat screen TVs and iPhones, and they live a comfortable Western life on about half the electricity per capita as Marylanders through, because of policies, because of state policies that have encouraged efficiency, going back to the 1970s, strict building codes, energy efficient appliances, etc. And lo and behold, you know, 30 years later, they use half the electricity per capita as Marylanders do. 12% of the U.S. population lives in California, seventh largest economy in the world, record goods and services year after year, half the electricity per capita. Obviously, we can do better in Maryland. Obviously, if we made up our minds and just adopted seriously the policies already in place in California, we could begin to cut our grid in half. Then we don't need any more high-risk energy. And let's talk about blackouts and brownouts. Let's go back to California again as an example. California, threats of blackouts and brownouts in 2001 because of the energy crisis. We now know that it had nothing to do with California's public policies. It had everything to do with Enron and, you guys remember this, Constellation speculating on energy on the West Coast and, and creating artificially this, this energy crisis. So there was a real threat of brownouts and blackouts in California in 2001, caused in part by the same company that wants to bring you nukes in Maryland, Constellation. And what was the response of Californians? Despite the fact that they used half the electricity of Marylanders, they used even less. The energy crisis in California was solved because between January 2001 and May 2001, Californians cut their electricity use 11% as a state in four months by turning out the lights, taking the stairs into the, instead of the elevator, you know, all these different measures that happen because California leaders asked Californians to do it. And that's already in a state that was using half the electricity per capita as Marylanders. Imagine if we got serious about efficiency in this state. We wouldn't have to be talking about nuclear power. I want to briefly tell you a story, again, going back to the early 2000s. When I formed Chesapeake Climate Action Network in 2002, one of our biggest goals was to pass a renewable energy standard, or so-called um, RPS, Renewable Portfolio Standard. And I and Ed Osan and Dr. Cindy Parker and others of us in this room were fighting for that 
for that standard. And, and we finally won, but in 2003 we lost. We finally won in 2004. And Constellation Energy was the main reason we lost. And they were fighting this bill tooth and nail. Don't make us get into renewables. Don't set a standard for renewable energy. And I remember having a meeting. I remember having a meeting with Paul O'Neill, the senior vice president of Constellation, right here in Baltimore in their fancy office, a couple blocks from here, overlooking the energy the, uh, the inner, inner harbor, and if you've ever been to Constellation, they have this huge energy trading floor, and it's a really, really fancy, huge outfit. And I was in there, and I asked Paul uh, O'Neill, why are you fighting this bill? Why are you fighting a renewable, a modest renewable energy standard in Maryland? And I asked him point blank in a private conversation, can't you make money off renewable energy? And his answer was yes. We can. We can make money off renewable energy, true renewable energy. We were talking about solar, wind, et cetera. And I said, well, then why are you fighting a push to, for renewable energy in Maryland? And his response in a, set, in a moment, in an unguarded moment, was the following. He told me, and I know he regrets it because I've repeated it ever since. <laughs> Paul O'Neill told me, the reason we're opposing this renewable energy standard is because we can't make as much money on renewables as you can on coal and nukes. And that's what this is all about. They want to build a nuke plant, not because we need it, not because we got to have it, and not because of global warming, because they can make more money this way than doing the right thing, thing through efficiency and renewable. And it's our job to band together and let the right thing happen and not the Calvary Plus plant. Thank you.